Dinosaurs were once the absolute pinnacle of evolution, dominating almost every ecological niche for over 140 million years, while us mammals were stuck living in their shadows. Until this asteroid hit Earth, unleashing chaos so immense that every non-avian dinosaur was totally wiped out. However, through this carnage, the path was paved for us mammals to finally have our turn. Since then, we've evolved from those tiny survivors to the respective rulers of the modern world. But what would happen if us mammals were sent back to the Cretaceous? Huh? Could modern mammals survive alongside the dinosaurs? Huh? Well, let's start off by ranking the first animal we're going to send back. The Honey Badger. These little guys have earned the reputation as one of the toughest animals alive. Known for their aggressive nature and remarkable intelligence, the honey badger is an animal you wouldn't expect to pack such a punch. While only growing to be up to 3 feet long, they're still able to fight off animals as dangerous as leopards or even lions. And while, sure, their cocky behavior does give them some intimidation boosts, their real secret is their skin, as it allows them to tank damage that would end similar sized animals. For one, it's relatively thick, which makes it hard to bite through, but the real advantage is its loose connection to their muscles. Basically, this means that the skin can move around a lot. It makes it nearly impossible for predators to get a good grip on them or cause serious damage. But toughness isn't their only defense. Honey badgers are expert diggers, capable of burrowing into the ground in a matter of minutes, not only providing them with a quick escape if need be, but also allows them to create a safe haven where they can rest or avoid threats altogether. Combined with this, they're extremely versatile. Their diet consists of basically anything, and they can live pretty much anywhere, from the deserts to the grasslands to the forests. This adaptability, along with their tenacity and intelligence, makes the honey badger one of the most resilient animals out there. So, how would they fare if brought back to the Cretaceous? If you take a look at any mammals that were around during the dinosaurs, they're pretty much a scaled down version of the honey badger. The way I see it, the honey badger is an ancient mammal on steroids. They'll be able to tank dinosaur bites, burrow, and can eat anything. Yeah, that's definitely a recipe for success. And because of this, I will be ranking them S tier. Our next contender is the elephants. These animals have many adaptations that make them basically unkillable in our modern world. The most obvious advantage, their size. Growing to be up to 13 feet tall at the shoulders and up to seven tons makes them the largest land animals alive today and far larger than any predators in their environment, with the lion, the biggest of them all, being only a fraction of their size. Combined with this, they're also extremely intelligent with great memories and problem solving skills that honestly are probably better than some people I know. But on a serious note, the most important traits they're smart to unlock for them is their ability to form complex social structures, which is just a fancy way of saying herds. These can range in size anywhere from 8 to even 100 individuals, and their primary function to protect and rear calves, because the elephant does have some downsides, and almost all of them come when they're babies. At this age, they're not that big, so their main defense is gone. They're not that fast, so no chance escaping, and they're not so strong, so no chance in fighting back. This leaves them with little options when face to face with a hungry predator. This is bad news, but it gets worse, because the gestation period for elephants is one of the longest in the animal kingdom, at two years. So losing a single offspring is a big deal and sets them back a long time. But those herds, they do a pretty damn good job at protecting their young. You might not believe it, but being surrounded by 12,000 pound giants ready to protect you increases your odds of survival quite a bit. These strategies all come together to work great in our modern world. But how would this do in the Cretaceous? For starters, relatively the elephant isn't going to be as massive, with other herbivores of equal or even larger sizes now in the mix. Because of this, competition for resources is bound to be intense. But the biggest problem are the predators, because they've gotten a lot bigger too. And did I mention, they're now specially adapted to hunt large prey. This is a type of predatory threat the elephant simply isn't accustomed to. Let's take a look at some of their Cretaceous contemporaries. All of them have evolutionary adaptations that show the insane arms race between predator and prey. Triceratops, a giant shield and horns, and Kylosaurus, well, it was a literal rock. All the elephants have are tusks, which aren't designed for defense in the first place. I guess the only good comparison might be hadrosaurs, who are giants that didn't have any crazy defensive features, at least ones you can't see at a glance, because their superpower was their quick reproductive rate. This is where the elephant falls flat. 
Unlike Havdrosaurus who can pop out eggs, every time the offspring of a baby elephant dies, it'll set them back by years. And the herds that elephants rely on, would they still be so successful against giant predators? There's just no way. So because of this, I will be ranking them D tier. Sure, a herd of adults could probably survive, but I don't think they'd be able to sustain this population. But will our next contender be doomed to the same fate? The horse. Found in just about every corner of the globe, they're among the most successful animals on planet Earth. And sure, that's partially because us humans have been bringing them with us everywhere we go, but that's not the whole story. Because even independently, horses thrive in all sorts of environments, with wild populations ranging from places as diverse as Africa's deserts to the Mongolian steppe and the Great Plains. Their success can be attributed to many things, though their mobility might be the most important of them. Horses face fierce competition from top mammalian predators like big cats, bears, and wolves. To survive, escaping these threats is crucial. That's why horses have evolved with slender bodies and long, powerful legs that enable them to run at speeds of around 30 miles per hour for extended periods of time. In fact, one particularly fast Mustang was clocked at 55 miles an hour, which is pretty damn fast. But those legs do more than just that, as they also serve as the horse's main line of defense, allowing them to deliver a powerful kick to anything chasing after them. And just like the elephants we talked about before this, horses too live in herds, providing safety in numbers and protection of the young. But how well would they do in the Cretaceous? First downside, horses heavily rely on grass, not just for food, which is a huge deal, but also their way of life. That's because it's nearly impossible to live this fast lifestyle in something like a forest. Because, you know, you're gonna run into a tree. And in the Cretaceous, grass and grasslands weren't nearly as widespread. Luckily, there were fern prairies or fern savannas, so these possibly could mimic the open spaces the horse need to survive, but would they be able to eat the food? Maybe. It's possible, and for the sake of keeping the horses in the race, let's just assume they can. And speaking of races, they'd win in any against the dinosaurs, since they'd be much faster. So I don't believe the adults would have any problem being able to escape predation, just like how they do today. However, just like the elephants, gestation period and the foals would be a big issue. But I don't think it'd be as big of an issue for the horse. That's because their gestation period is about half the time, so losing a baby wouldn't be as great of a setback. And I believe the foals would have a better chance of surviving. That's because only a few hours after birth, they can already walk. And after a few days, they can run alongside their mother in the herd. With their biggest threats likely coming from small to medium sized carnivores like the raptors, who would see the horse and its young as a perfect sized targets, this would probably make the predator prey dynamic similar to what they are today. Putting all this together with the speed of the young, protection from the herd, and the powerful kick of the adults, I believe this strategy would be effective in the Cretaceous. Whereas looking back at the elephants again, defense through size wouldn't work as well, but speed surely would. That's why I'm going to rank them just above the elephants at C tier. If you're liking this video, go check out my other stuff after this. Now onto the rabbit. Individually, they're not all that noteworthy. They're small and mostly defenseless. I say mostly because they can try to run and dodge attacks, but unlike the horse that can tank some damage and deal some of their own, the rabbit is one slip up away from being eaten. Which is why they're such a popular dinner option for most carnivores. So how the hell do they still exist? Simple answer is, rabbits machine gun blast out babies like no other. With the ability to give birth to anywhere between 30 to 50 offspring yearly, and given the fact that they can start reproducing just 4 months after being born, the evolutionary strategy of the rabbit is to assembly line out babies faster than they can be eaten. So how well would this work in the Cretaceous? I don't see why it would be any different than today. Sure, they'd be getting eaten left and right, but what else is new? They would just continue to reproduce and probably become a favorite dinner for the dinosaurs just as they are today. Now the only drawback I can see is that most of the plants rabbits eat like fruits and grasses weren't as widespread in the Cretaceous. Instead, ferns, cycads, and conifers would be the most common forms of vegetation. Though I believe they'd make do, it would still be a slight struggle to adapt, which is why I'll be ranking the rabbit in A tier. Our final animal today is the cheetah. With sleek bodies and long legs, these cats have earned themselves the title of the fastest land animals alive today. 
reaching speeds of up to 80 miles per hour. This not only makes them unparalleled when it comes to chasing down prey, but also allows them to avoid becoming prey themselves. But it's not just their speed. Cheetahs have another trick up their sleeve, and that's incredible acceleration. They can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just a few seconds, and can make sharp turns with ease, thanks to their long tails acting as rudders. This combination of speed and agility is crucial for catching their fast-moving prey, but putting your whole strategy into maxing out speed comes at a cost. Compared to other predators in their ecosystem, cheetahs are a relative lightweight. This makes them vulnerable when it comes to defending their kills. In modern Africa, pack predators like hyena and even lone lions can easily push cheetahs off their hard-earned meals, leaving them hungry despite their hunting success. So how would this all play out if the cheetah were dropped into the Cretaceous? First off, the cheetah's speed would still be a major advantage. It would be faster than anything else on the ground, easily outrunning any predator that might try to chase it down. And when it comes to hunting, its speed would likely make it very successful in catching smaller or juvenile dinosaurs, similar to how it preys on young antelopes today. However, the environment of the Cretaceous wasn't exactly cheetah friendly. Open grasslands, as we already know, were much less common, meaning the cheetah might struggle in dense forests where its speed would be less effective. So, to survive, it would be necessary they find those open places. And just like today, they certainly would struggle with their kills being stolen by pack hunters or larger predators. But this isn't something the cheetah isn't already used to. Overall, their biggest problem would be finding places that would allow them to utilize their speed. But I think they would sit in a similar position on the food chain. Not the biggest or the baddest, but certainly the fastest. And because of this, I'll be ranking them B tier. If you like this video, go check out my other stuff and please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and as always, Jehona.